everyone. Welcome to my home. Thank you for inviting me into yours. I think this is week three, week four of virtual classes. I hope that you're hanging in there and doing okay. I know I'm just taking each day one day at a time. I'm excited to offer practice today that's going to be core focus. So we're going to be working strength and firing up our core. We're going to be giving some love to the hips and working with our arm balance, Bakasana. So working with our crow or crane pose. As always in your practice, I really want you to honor your body. So whether you're newer to the practice or have been practicing for a while, you know what it is that you need. I am just your guide. So taking what serves you and leaving the rest. I'd like to get us started on our backs. So we're going to come onto the mat and work in Sukta Baddha Konasana. So soles of the feet will come together, knees will come out wide. If you don't have yoga blocks at home, you can use pillows or blankets. Soles of the feet will come together, knees are gonna release out wide. And just coming to lie on your back. And then letting your left hand rest on the heart, right hand rest on the belly. Let's take a deep breath in together. And exhale. Sigh it out. We'll do that again. Nice deep breath in. And exhale. Sigh it out. And just taking these first few moments in our practice to settle into stillness. Connecting with our breath. Just breathing in and breathing out. Feel the breath moving in and moving out of your body. And then I'd like to begin practice with a quote. This is a quote by Leo Tolstoy. Remember then, there is only one time that is important, now. It is the most important time because it is the only time when we have any power. So as we settle here in stillness, where does your attention immediately go? Bring your attention back to not only the present moment, but what you want to focus on right now. Where you place your attention is where you rest your power. What you put your attention on, you grant power to. Attention is power. Don't lose yourself in the mind. Don't get lost in your fear. The what ifs. What if I get sick? What if a loved one gets sick? All of the what ifs things we don't have control over. In this present moment, there is nothing to fear. Let us focus on what we can control. Don't give away your attention. Choose where to place it. Let's find and be rooted in our strength. Let's begin with setting an intention for our practice. How can your time here serve you best, both in your body and mind? Stay true to your intention, whatever challenge arises. Staying connected with the breath, the anchor for the present moment. Feeling the breath moving in to your body and moving out. Letting go of anything else. Connecting with your body, connecting to your senses. When you're ready, you can slowly blink your eyes open. Draw your hands to the outside of the knees. 
and then gently draw your knees into your chest. We'll give ourselves a nice hug and squeeze here. And then when you're ready, we'll bring the feet back. We're going to come into that same position of the soles of the feet together, knees out wide. But we're going to be a little more active here. So gently press the soles of the feet together. So feel of this energy coming up through the legs. And then connect with your low belly. So gently draw up through the low belly. We're going to bring the hands behind the head. Make a hammock with your hands. And then we're going to curl up to the tips of the shoulder blades, pressing your head heavy in your hands. Now when you're ready, we're just going to move into some crunches here. So immediately beginning to fire up your abdomen. As we exhale, curl forward and then inhale back. So try to keep the head, neck and shoulders curled forward up to the tips of the shoulder blades. So it's a small crunch forward and back, feeling that engagement through the upper belly. And keep that activeness through the feet and legs, pressing the soles of the feet together. That exhale, curl forward and inhale back. Try not to pull on the head and neck, rather using the strength of your abdomen to curl the rib cage down to the hips. And then we'll continue to move forward and back for four more. Three, immediately tapping into our strength. Two, and one, let that head rest back for a moment. We're gonna draw the feet in. So now the knees are drawing in towards a table position. Try to keep your butterfly shape. If this doesn't feel good in your body, you can just bring your feet flat, knees bent. We're gonna bring the hands back behind the head, curling up to the tips of the shoulder blades. Here is our low point. Exhale, curl forward, and then draw the knees in. Maybe we work the elbows towards tapping the knees. So we're Coming into that reverse crunch, peeling the tailbone away. Inhale as we come back. Exhale, draw everything in. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. How about four more? Last three. Last two. Last one, hold everything in for four, three, two, and one, and release. Let the arms extend, let the legs extend. Notice where the mind goes. I'm making you start to work really hard right at the beginning of practice. Find that inner strength, find that focus. And then when you're ready, we're gonna draw the knees in and then bring the hands back behind the head. So I want you to imagine that you have a marker right at the center of your forehead. And then as you exhale, curl up to the tips of the shoulder blades. Again, head is pressed heavy in your hands so you're not pulling on the head and neck. Then I want you to imagine you're gonna draw a circle on the ceiling with that marker. So the torso is gonna sway over to the left, curl forward, circle out and around, and then back to center. Now reverse the direction of your circle. Circling in one direction and the other. Keep your low belly engaged and strong. Head is pressing heavy in your hands. So all of this motion, this movement's happening from the rib cage and the abdomen. Circle to the left. Circle the to the right. And then one more time in each direction. And release back. Let the arms extend one more time. And then we're going to finish our position here with a crow pose lying on our backs. So draw your knees into your chest. We're going to bring the arms up. And then imagine, I want you to flex at your wrists. Imagine that your hands are on the ceiling. So the arms are shoulder width distance apart right above the shoulders. And then when you're ready, Let's curl the tailbone forward. Draw the knees as high up on the upper arms as you can go, trying to nestle it in almost into the armpits if you can reach. And then curl the head, neck, and shoulders forward. See if you can round through the upper back. Really reach through the arms, active and strong, flexing at the wrist. Maybe the big toes come to touch. And then see if you can curl forward a little further, drawing the knees, pressing the knees into the upper arms. 
Draw everything in as tight as you can make it. I know this is a ton of work. Feel that energy, feel the strength, and breathe. Stay with your breath for four, three, two, and one, and release. Draw your knees into your chest. Give yourselves a nice hug and squeeze. Gentle rock side to side. And then when you're ready, we're just going to roll to the side. Come onto the hands and knees. Begin movement here with our cat cows. So let the wrists stack beneath the shoulders, knees stack beneath the hips. And then connecting movement here with breath. Inhale to lift the sternum, lift the tail. And then exhale, press the mat away, round through the upper back, ease to the thighs. And then just move here with your breath. Shifting forward and back, letting any organic movements come into your body. Maybe it's some C shapes, some hip circles, shifting the hips back down and around. Just find what feels good in your body. And just take two more rounds of breath with whatever you're working with. We'll come back through center. Let the hips shift back. Come into your child pose. Knees will open wide. Let the arms reach actively forward. Let the forehead find the mat or rest on the block. And just release here. Feel your body supported on the mat beneath you. This is our rest pose and our regrounding pose. So always giving yourselves permission to come here at any point during your practice. Next exhale, we'll shift forward. And then coming into our plank pose, we'll prepare to come into our first downward facing dog. So feet are at least hip distance width apart. Fingers are spread wide here. Take a deep breath in and exhale, shift those hips up and back, downward facing dog. And our first downward dog of the practice, maybe the hamstrings are feeling tight so bend your knees as much as you need to find nice length in your spine let that head be heavy give it a little shift side to side keeping active through the hands so pressing the mat away gently spiral the eyes of the elbows forward but press actively into the thumb and first finger we don't want to load into that pinky finger side edge of the hand and wrist so keep active find the pads of the fingertips heels of the hands someone's feel that space beneath the palm a cupping action on your next inhale bring your gaze forward and as you exhale slowly walk your feet to hands come into your first forward fold feet are hip distance with apart let a generous bend come into the knees and just release here let the head be heavy Maybe giving that head a shift side to side. Just feel tension begin to roll right off the shoulders. You'll feel the weight shift forward. Try to stay balanced at the midsole of the foot. And then maybe a bind would feel good here. Perhaps cradling the elbows and the hands for a rag doll or maybe something else. I like a gentle sway and rag doll. Whatever feels good in your body. Just let your body and your breath guide you. If you have any binds, go ahead and release them. We'll soften through the knees, so we'll slowly begin to stack the spine, coming all the way to standing. Let the arms reach up, hearts lift, and exhale, hands to heart center, samastitiki. Let's move through a few rounds of our sun. We'll begin to build heat in the body. Inhale, let the arms sweep up, hearts lift, and exhale, we fold forward, hinging from the head. Inhale for your half lift, hands to shins, find that flat back, shoulder blades draw back. Exhale, plant the hands, step your feet back, your plank pose, always feeling free to modify coming down onto the knees. Pause here for a breath, finding that strength, press the mat away. Next inhale, we shift forward, shoulders over the fingertips, exhale, lower down, knees, hips, chest, chin, this first time through. Tops of the feet will come down to the mat, inhale, heart reaches forward, your low cobra, and then exhale, release. Again, inhale, heart reaches forward. Press actively into the tops of the feet. Thighs are strong. 
exhale, release. One more time, inhale, heart reaches forward, strengthen the upper back, lift you. And then exhale, release. Your choice to press up to your table or plank will meet in our next downward facing dog. Once you arrive, deep breath in, nice full exhale, reconnect with the breath. Inhale, gaze forward, exhale, bend the knees, we'll walk the feet forward. Inhale for your half lift, hands to shins, and exhale, fold. Soften through the knees, we root to rise, arms sweep up, and exhale, hands to heart center. Another round, inhale, arms sweep up, hearts lift, and exhale, we fold forward. Inhale for your half lift, exhale, plant your hands, step your feet back, your chaturanga. So we can lower down halfway or all the way, hug the elbows in. Tops of the feet come down to the mat. Inhale, heart reaches forward, your upward facing or your cobra. Toes shift forward, hips shift up and back, downward facing dog. Deep breath in, nice full exhale. Inhale, gaze forward, exhale, bend the knees. We'll step or float the feet forward. Inhale for your half lift, exhale fold, root to rise, arms sweep up, hearts lift, and exhale hands to heart center. One more round, inhale arms sweep up, and exhale we fold forward. Inhale for your half lift, exhale plant your hands, step your feet back, take your journey back to downward dog. So these vinyasa transitions are for you to take or leave. You can feel free to add push-ups if you want more or just come back to your downward facing dog. Reconnect with your breath once you arrive. Deep breath in, nice full exhale. On your next inhale, let the right leg lengthen and as you exhale, bend into the knee on, open the hip. We'll work to square that right shoulder down to the mat and then keep active, pressing down into that left heel. Maybe some ankle circles, some hip circles, whatever feels good here. On your next exhale, square the hips to the mat. Inhale, right leg lengthens. Exhale, draw that knee to nose. Press the mat away, rounding through the upper back. Take one more round of breath here, and then as you exhale, step that foot forward, Ardha Lunge, Anjaneyasana. You can let the back knee release. Take a moment to arrive in your pose. Set your foundation strong, root down through the front heel, and then engage through that left glute. So tailbone draws down to the mat, and slowly we walk the hands up to the thighs. I like to shift myself back a bit from the lunge to really find that active energy and opening through the front of the left hip. So hands can stay to the thighs, or maybe we can bring the hands back. We're gonna find a bind here. So hands can bind together at the small of the back, and then shoulders draw down and back, lengthen the arms back, breathe through the front of the shoulders and chest. Take one more round of breath. And as you exhale, let the hands release. Left hand plants inside the front foot, Take a deep breath in, and as you exhale, open up for your twist. So notice how much weight you're placing in that left hand. Find the strength of your abdomen. Maybe come to tented fingers. Maybe you hover that hand above the mat. Draw your right knee into the midline. Keep that connection with the abdomen and breathe. Taking one more round of breath. As you exhale, unwind. Bring the hands to frame the front foot. The back knee is going to lift. Right foot is going to step up and back to find your three-legged dog. Let's bend into the knee, yawn, open the hip once here. And then exhale, draw the hips back to square. Inhale, right leg lengthens. Exhale, draw that knee to nose. And again, think about that, uh, think about that strength, excuse me, in the hand. So press the mat away, round through the upper back. We're going to find a set of yogi mountain climbers here. So you can move slow or we can switch, left knee draws in. So maybe it's just drawing in, slow and controlled, or left and right, left and right. Don't lose that action through the hands, pressing the mat away, strong through the shoulders. 
How about four more? Three, two, last one. Now next time the right knee draws in, stay. We're gonna step forward, find your pyramid pose, Parsvottanasana. Shorten the stance of your back foot. We're going to root down through both heels. Maybe the back toes are turned out slightly. And then dial the right hip back, left hip forward. So those hips are working towards square to the front of the room. Inhale to find length and then exhale, we fold. Let that head release. Keep a soft bend in that right knee and breathe into the hamstring here. Breathing in and breathing out. When you're ready, re-engage through the belly. We'll soften through the right knee. We're going to spider walk the right hands forward. Left leg extends. We come into our half split. Half or full split. So that left leg will extend out behind you. We begin to fold. Hands are beneath the shoulders or maybe they're on blocks. It doesn't matter how high the left leg goes. Keeping that micro bend in that right knee. And let the head go. Release here. Notice where you're holding on to tension. Take one more deep breath in, and as you exhale, let that left foot release beside the right and forward fold. On your inhale, find your half lift, flat back, long spine. Exhale, plant your hands, take your journey back to your downward dog. So again, you can work your vinyasa, or simply just shift up and back. When you arrive, take that deep breath in, nice full exhale. Reconnect with the breath. Inhale, that left leg lengthens. Exhale, bend into the knee on. Open the hip on this side. Again, any movements that feel nice or maybe it's stillness. On your next exhale, squaring the hips to the mat, Inhale, right leg lengthens. Exhale, draw that knee to nose. Again, press the mat away. Pause here. Feel the strength and energy through the core, through the arms, through the shoulders. Abdomen is staying really strong. Take one more deep breath in, and as you exhale, step that left foot forward, our low lunge, Anjaneyasana. Let the back knee release. And again, arrive in your pose. Build from the ground up. Feel that rooting energy beneath that front foot. Abdomen strong, tailbone draws down, engage through that right glute. And then we slowly begin to walk the hands up to the thigh, maybe release back from your lunge a bit. Feel that active opening through the front of the right hip. We can let the arms reach up and back, finding our bind, hands come together, and then shoulders draw down and back. Keep the elbows soft, drawing the heels of the hands towards one another, and then breathe through the front of the shoulders and chest. Deep breath in, nice full exhale. And one more round of breath. Exhale, hands release to frame the front foot. Right hand plants, take your twist to the left. We open. Again, draw everything into your midline. Don't lose that connection here. Inhale, find a little more length. Exhale, maybe we twist a little deeper. Drawing that right hip back as you twist. Again, maybe coming to tented fingers. Maybe we hover. Keep the strength in the abdomen strong to help you hold your twist. And then next exhale, we slowly unwind. We're going to lift the back knee. Left foot shifts up and back, coming into that three-legged dog. Yawn, open the hip just for a breath. And then as we exhale, come back through center. Deep breath in, left leg lengthens. Exhale, draw that knee to nose. So option to find those mountain climbers or you know where we're going. You can just step forward. Left foot and then right shifts back. Knee in and back, in and back for four three, two, last 
set. Pause with the left knee drawing forward. Then we step forward. Back heel shifts forward coming into our pyramid pose. So shortening the stance, making sure that both heels can be rooted here. And then inhale finds length in the spine and then exhale we fold, hinging from the hips. And hands can be on blocks, keeping that soft bend in that front knee, breathing into the hamstring. Slowly we engage through the belly. We're going to begin to walk the hands forward. Back leg extends coming into your half or full split. So gentle tuck of the chin, drawing that forehead towards the shin. Again, it doesn't matter how high that right leg goes. Keeping that soft bend and that standing knee is important. Just breathe into the hamstring here. And then one more round of breath on your next exhale. Release that right foot down and meet the left forward fold. Inhale for your half lifts. Exhale, plant your hands, step or float your feet back, your chaturanga. Inhale for your upward facing or cobra. Exhale, hip shift up and back, downward facing dog. Reconnect with the breath. Deep breath in, nice full exhale. Next inhale, the right leg lengthens. As you exhale, bend into the knee on, open the hip. Exhale, squaring the hips to the mat. Inhale, right leg lengthens. Exhale, draw that knee to nose. Once again, your yogi mountain climber, strong and steady. Maybe you do two, maybe you do ten, maybe you do none. You find what serves you in your practice. Let's do four more if you're with me, Yogi Mountain Climbers. Last two. Last set. Right knee draws in, step it forward, our crescent warrior. So as we rise, we're going to be balancing on the ball of the back foot. Feet are going to be hip distance width apart. And then just arrive in your pose. Find this strength here. Root down through the front heel, bend into the back knee, and then press the heel back. Tailbone actively draws down. Feel all this nice opening through the front of the hip. And then let the arms reach up. Shoulders draw down, biceps spiral back, heart reaches forward. Breathing here. Deep breath in, nice full exhale. Let your arms reach out behind you. We're gonna take that bind once again. And then let the arms lengthen, shoulders draw back. On your next exhale, slowly begin to shift your weight forward. We're gonna come into our warrior three variation. Back leg extends and imagine you're gonna stand on the wall behind you. So flexing the back toes, toes are pointing down. Keep a soft bend in that standing knee and breathe. Deep breath in, nice full exhale. Take one more round of breath. And as you exhale, release the hands beneath the shoulders, once again coming into our standing splits. So breathe here, breathing into the hamstring. Again, soft bend in that standing knee. Let the head go. Moving into our Sheba squats, we're going to bend into both knees here. So bending into the right knee, the left knee is gonna come down and tap the back of the calf, or think about the calf, the back of the heel. Inhale, that leg extends. Exhale, bend into both knees. Left knee taps behind the calf. Inhale, extend, exhale, tap. Inhale, extend, exhale, tap. How about three more? Inhale, extend, exhale, tap. Two more, exhale, tap. One more, exhale, tap. Inhale, leg lengthens, exhale, release, forward fold. 
Inhale through your half lift, hands to shins. Exhale, plant your hands. Take your journey back to your downward dog. Once you arrive, breathing in and breathing out. Inhale, left leg lengthens. Exhale, bend into the knee, yawn, open the hip. Again, any movement here, anything that feels good. Next, exhale, squaring the hips to the mat. Inhale, left leg lengthens. Exhale, draw that knee to nose, pressing the mat away. Option for mountain climbers. We will switch either slow or fast. Maybe you take a child pose if that's where you want to go. Honor your body. Four more. Three. Use the strength of your belly to draw those knees in. Last round. Now that knee draws in, step the foot forward coming into our crescent warrior. So again, adjusting your foot position as we rise. Find that strength in the foundation. So tailbone draws down, bend into the back knee and then press the heel back. Letting the arms extend, shoulders draw down, heart reaches open and breathe. Stay connected with the breath. Feel how strong you are. Feel that connection with your abdomen. Arms will sweep back and around, taking that bind. Shoulders draw down the back. Breathe into the front of the chest. And then when you're ready, we slowly begin to shift forward, coming into your warrior three variation. Back leg extends, standing on the wall behind you. Flexing at the ankle, toes pointing down. And breathe. Notice you may feel a little stronger, a little more wobbly on this side. Take one more round of breath. And then as you exhale, release the hands beneath the shoulder. Come into your standing splits. So again, that back foot could even stay grounded, right? Whatever you need to do that you feel steady in your body. Half split or full split. Gentle tuck up the chin. Then re-engage through the belly, moving into our Shiva squats. Take a deep breath in and as you exhale, bend into both knees. Now right knee taps left calf. Inhale, leg extends. Exhale, tap. Inhale, leg extends. Exhale, tap. Three more. Inhale, leg extends. Exhale, tap. Last two. Extend and tap. Last one. Extend and tap. Inhale, leg lengthens. And exhale, release. Forward fold. Inhale for your half lifts. Exhale, plant your hands. Take your journey back to your downward dog. Again, you decide. These vinyasas, maybe you skip them, maybe you take them, maybe you add push-ups. Find your strength and resilience, resilience through this practice. On your next inhale, let your right leg lengthen. And as you exhale, bend into the knee and open the hip. Now, if you have a flip dog in your practice, we'll shift the weight over into the left hand. The right toes are gonna to reach off the mat behind you, lifting through the heart, lifting the hips, arcing the body up. Grip the mat with the left fingertips. Breathe. As you exhale, slowly we begin to unwind. Right hand comes back. Inhale, right leg lengthens. Exhale, draw that knee to nose, shifting the weight forward. Maybe we take our round of mountain climbers, or maybe just step it forward. Four, three, last two, left set. Right knee draws in, step it forward. Our crescent lunge once again. Balancing on the ball of the back foot, we rise. Deep breath in, arms sweep up, exhale, you've been here before. How can you experience this pose deeper? Breathing in and breathing out. 
Letting the arms sweep back and around, taking that bind. Shoulders draw down and back. Deep breath in. Exhale, shift forward, our warrior three once again. If you need to release the bind, hands can come to the thighs. Take one more round of breath. And then on your next exhale, let the back foot release to your crescent. Release your bind. Take an inhale. And then exhale, open up for your warrior two. I'm going to just shift so my back isn't towards you. So warrior two, right foot is forward. Making your adjustment so that back foot opens up to align with the back edge of the mat. Strong bend in the front knee, knees pointing over the second and third toes. And then tailbone draws down. So thinking about all of this strong energy, really important through this back leg. Arms extend out from the shoulders and breathe. Reach shoulders, squeeze them together. So arms are reaching or drawing in and then reach out through the fingertips. And then go ahead and extend through your front knee. I like to shorten my stance, so maybe walking that back foot in a bit. Reverse triangle pose, front palm flips reverse. Reaching up, feeling that nice opening through that right side body. Next exhale, shift back through center. Moving into triangle pose here. Inhale, shift forward, forward, forward. Exhale, we revolve. Stacking the left ribs over the right. Front hand just lands where it lands. Maybe onto the front of the shin. Maybe the back of hand. Can come to the inside of that leg, lower leg, and then breathe through the front of the hips. Really important to keep that connection, root down through that knife edge of that back foot. So we're going to find a little core work here. So I want you to imagine that this top hand, we're going to lift up as if we're reaching up for something on the shelf. So from here, take a deep breath in, exhale, reach up and lower back. Reach and lower back. So you're working strength through the obliques, through the top of the hip, that QL. Maybe we take that bottom hand for an extra challenge, bring the fingertips back behind and we reach and lower. Reach. Keep strong through that back leg, belly is strong. How about four more? Three. Two. And one, release into your triangle, hold for a full round of breath. And then slowly bring your gaze down to your front foot, bend into the front knee. We're gonna unwind, bring both hands inside the front foot. We're gonna move into our lizard pose. My mat keeps moving for some reason. So let the back knee release. And then open up the stance of your front foot so the hands can be shoulder width distance apart. And then here, once we have this alignment, bring the fingers wide. So spreading the fingers wide. And we're going to do a little work first before we rest in our pigeon. I'm sorry, yes, in our lizard. So lift the back knee and keep strong through the low belly. Find that action of pressing the outside of your shoulder to the inside of the knee on the right, right? So we have that active engagement. Heart's reaching forward. Take a deep breath in. As you exhale, we're going to draw the weight forward. Tap your left knee as high as you can up on the left tricep. Inhale, let that leg reach back. Exhale, tap. Step it back and tap. How about we do that three more times? Tap. Last two. Last one, and release. Now you can decide the back knee can stay lifted or maybe the knee is grounded. Forearms can come to blocks or the floor. Keep your heart actively reaching forward. So that shoulder pressing to the inside of the knee, knee to the outside of the shoulder, breathing into the front of the hip. And if you have any other variations or movements, or positions you like to take in your lizard pose and just do what feels good in your body take one more round of breath 
And then when you're ready, slowly bring yourself back up on your hands. We're going to lift the back knee if it's grounded. And then step the left foot to the outside of the right. We're going to come into our Malasana, our Yogi Squat. So making any adjustments you need to. Toes can be turned out or forward. Kind of play around with what feels best in your body. We want to make sure the knees and toes are pointing in the same direction. So elbows to the inside of the knees, knees to the outside of the elbows. Hands will come to sternum. We want to reach the heart forward. So trying not to round forward here, find length in the spine. So if you need to lift the hips, we can really be active here, working strength, right? We want to challenge ourselves, right? If we can find that resilience, that strength, we realize we're a lot stronger than we thought we were. So breathing in and breathing out. And then one more round of breath. And then exhale, let the hands release, lift the hips, forward fold. Maybe take a sway, side to side of the torso, release, whatever feels good. And then when you're ready, toe heel the feet together. Inhale for a half lift, left back. Exhale, plant your hands, take your journey back to your downward dog. When you arrive, deep breath in, exhale, release, reconnecting with the breath. On your next inhale, let the left leg lengthen. And as you exhale, bend into the knee on open the hip. And then as we did on the other side, if you have a flip in your practice, we can slowly shift the weight into the right hand. Left toes are gonna come out behind you off of your mat. Let your right toes point forward, arc up through the hips and the heart, and breathe into the front of the body. Again, stay active, pressing that mat away through the right arm and shoulder. On your next exhale, slowly begin to unwind. Left leg reaches up and out behind you. Exhale, draw that knee to nose. Again, we've been here before, working strength. You choose, maybe we just step forward or work your mountain climbers. A little right knee draws in, left, right, and left for four, three, two, last round. Left knee draws in, press the mat away, step it forward. We rise up our crescent warrior. Again, making your adjustments, find that strength in your foundation. Heart reaches forward. The arms can reach back and behind, taking your bind once more. Heart lengthens forward, shoulders draw down and back. Deep breath in. And then as you exhale, shift the hips forward, coming into your warrior three variation. Back foot stands on the wall behind you, soft bend in the standing knee. Stay with the breath. And then slowly we release back foot, releasing the hands, inhale, arms sweep up. Exhale, open up for your warrior two. Again, making all of your adjustments. Arrive in your pose strong. We connect with the breath. Let that front knee extend our triangle legs, maybe shortening the stance. And then hips opening, press forward. Front palm flips, reverse triangle. Breathing space in that left side body.
Next exhale, shifting back through center. Inhale, we shift forward. And exhale, we revolve. Again, hips press forward. Imagine the tailbone just reaching back for the back heel. Breathe into the front of the hips, stacking the shoulders. And preparing for that oblique work here. So imagine you're reaching up with that right hand, reaching up on a shelf. So we lift and lower, really fire up through that right leg. Lift and lower. Maybe that bottom hand comes to the back of the head. Reach and lower, reach and lower. How about four more? Three, last two, last one. Pause here, hold your triangle for one more breath. And then as you exhale, bend into the front knee, unwind, bringing the hands inside the front foot, finding our lizard with the left foot forward. And then again, widening your stance enough so those hands can be at least shoulder width distance apart. Fingers spread wide. And then when we arrive here, coming into those taps, so lifting the back knee, really engage the wrong strong, excuse me, through your belly, pressing the mat away, round through the upper back. And then as you exhale, shift the right knee forward, tap as high as you can on that right upper arm, and then step it back. Exhale, tap, inhale, exhale, tap, inhale back. About three more, keep that strong engagement of the left shoulder pressing into the inside of the knee, right? That's gonna help stabilize you here. One more, and release. And then your choice, back knee can stay lifted or grounded. Maybe we stay high on the hands, maybe come down to the forearms. Keep the heart reaching actively forward, pressing that shoulder into knee, knee into shoulder on the left. And then any variation, maybe coming into a twist or a bind, whatever you have in your practice. your next exhale, slowly release, coming up to the hands, and then when you're ready, lift the back knee, step forward with that right foot to the outside of the right hand, we're going to move into our malasana once again. So options, if you want to maybe sit on one or even two blocks, this may be where you want to work in your practice, this is quite nice, so if you have blocks, or blankets to sit on. You can work here. If you're not familiar with the crow, you can watch me. Maybe you might decide you want to try it or maybe not. Again, this is your practice. If you're at home, you can have a pillow. Maybe if you've started to work with this but aren't exactly sure, you can place a pillow beneath your face. So a lot of the fear of what's going to happen if we go forward. So coming into our crow or crane, you're going to bring your hands shoulder width distance apart. So what happens a lot is people keep the hands too narrow. And this is going to make it so much more challenging. So you want the hands shoulder width distance, maybe even a hair wider. And then spread the fingers wide. So I'm reaching my arms really far forward. Hands are shoulder width distance, fingers are wide. right? So we've been working that press, that rounding through the upper back. So rise up on the balls of the feet. So you can just begin to lift the hips and shift the weight forward and back. So things to remember, we want the gaze to stay forward, right? Maybe this is all we work with, right? So you're pressing actively into the hands, press the mat away, rounding through the upper back. So we're not just loading all the weight, dumping it on the upper arms, right? We want to feel a lift. Imagine the low belly is lifting up to the sky. Or maybe we come forward stay here maybe we practice just lifting one set of toes then the other and maybe this is as far as we go or finding all that strength and energy pressing the mat away maybe we lift both sets of toes maybe the big toes come to touch 
Press the mat away. Feel that energy. Feel strong through the low belly. Now those of you that are working your shoot back, when you shoot back, you land with the toes curled forward and you want to land in a strong low push-up position. So think about shooting your legs back like shooting out of a cannon. Boom! We land in that low push-up. Then we come into upper dog, maybe taking your vinyasa or whatever you're working with. We're going to slowly shift back, coming into your child pose. Reconnect with your breath. <sighs> breathing in, breathing out. And once we come into stillness, what comes back into the thoughts? Redirect, stay in the present moment. On your next exhale, we're going to come forward. We have just a little more work planned. We're almost there. We're going to come down onto the forearms. So now maybe we stay in the knees, right? Maybe we need to start winding down. But we still have a little more to go, right? So we want to be done. We want to be finished, right? We're done. But we still have a little more distance to travel. So dig deep. Find that extra energy. You have it there and you can get where you need to go. Maybe we come up onto the toes, press into the forearms strong, press the mat away. Still building a little more strength. Breathing in and breathing out. One more round of breath. And exhale, let the knees release. So I'm going to bring us into a variation of crow. I only did this myself for the first time a couple of days ago. And I was actually amazed at how challenging it was. So you may want to just watch. You may want to just shift back in child pose. But here on our forearms, go ahead and turn your palms down. And then I want you to actually grab your biceps. So this is where we want the position of the elbows and let the hands come down. And then we want to press the mat away. So just like we were doing on our hands, now we're pressing into the forearms. So here, we're going to lift the knees and then walk those knees up to the upper arms, right? So just like we did in crow before, maybe we can just rock the weight forward and back. Gaze stays between the thumbs, a little forward of the fingers. And then maybe pressing actively into the forearms, we lift both sets of toes. And just breathe. And when you're finished, slowly shift the hips back. I want to hear how you did with that. Breathing in and breathing out. And then slowly lengthen your body forward. We're going to come onto our bellies, onto the mats. And we've done a lot of abdominal work, a lot of flexing forward. Now we're going to work the back in extension. So to begin, Let's bring the legs out behind you where it's comfortable for your low back. Abdomen draws in and up away from the mat. Let your arms extend. And then depending on how much space, I don't quite have enough space around me, but maybe you're practicing at home, you have space around the arms and legs. So resting on the forehead, hollow through your belly, draw your pubic bone forward. We're going to work to lengthen the legs so long that they lift. Keep the abdomen drawing in and up. Now here, take a deep breath in, lengthen the head, neck, and shoulders to lift them, and then lengthen the arms. Draw your shoulder blades back so we have a soft bend in the elbows. I don't want the shoulders by the ears. So as we lift, we're gonna open the arms and legs, and then draw the arms and legs forward and lower down. So lengthen to lift arms and legs. So it's like a jumping jack. Arms open, legs open. Arms come forward, legs extend back and lower. Keep your 
hollow of the abdomen as the arms and legs extend. Back of the neck stays long, gaze is about to the front edge of your mat and lower. Let's do this two more times, lift, lengthen, arms open or cactus, legs open, arms reach forward, legs come back and lower. One more time, lengthen to lift, open, draw it forward and release. Make a pillow with your hands, rest your forehead down, bend into the knees and take a gentle rock side to side with the lower legs. Nice release for the low back. Then let the legs extend. Arms are going to extend and then bend into the right knee. Abdomen is strong, so hollow your abs away from the mat. We're going to bring the right hand to reach back. Maybe it catches the top of the foot or the ankle. If you can reach the ankle, go ahead and flex the foot. And then draw your knee in line with your hip best that you can. So use your left hand, shoulder draws away from the ears on the left. You're going to press into the left hand. And then we're going to lengthen to lift, pressing that right foot into hand, hand drawing into foot. Feeling that nice stretch through the front of the hip, through the front of the shoulder on the right. Now maybe we keep this hand grounded or maybe a little balance challenge. We lengthen the left arm and leg. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Press actively, squeeze into that right glute and left glute if you're extending that left arm and leg. And then next exhale, slowly release, making that pillow once again. Let the lower legs gently sway side to side. Then we're going to come in on the opposite side. So bend into the left knee. Left hand reaches back for either the top of the foot or front of the ankle. And again, making that strong connection or reconnecting with the abdomen. We don't want to lose that. Right arm extends, shoulder draws away from the ear. Take a deep breath in as you exhale lengthen so you can press into that right hand to get that lift and then pressing that foot into hand, hand into foot. And then maybe we stay here or for a little more challenge for balance, you can lengthen that right arm and leg as well. Stay with your breath. Keep that connection to your abdomen. This is easy to lose the connection there. So keep that hollow in and up. Stay for one more round of breath. And exhale, release. Once again, make that pillow with your hands, bend into the knees, sway side to side. We're gonna take one more opening for the front body. So let the legs extend behind you. Now I'm gonna bring us into Sphinx per first. So let your arms extend, draw your elbows beneath the shoulders. And then shoulders draw down and back. Find your abdomen again, hollow your belly and then reach your heart forward through the gateway of the arms. So shoulders draw down and back. Now you can stay with your sphinx. We're coming into our full cobra, bhujangasana. We're gonna bring the hands to the base of the ribs and then draw the shoulders down and back. Hug the elbows in tight to your rib cage. And then tops of the feet are active, engage through the thighs, abdomen is strong. Inhale as we lengthen the heart forward. And then as you exhale, we reach forward, shoulders draw down and back. Again, keeping that engagement through the abdomen. Feeling that nice opening through the front body. And exhale, slowly release. One more time, bend into the knees, a gentle sway side to side. And then when you're ready, we shift the hips back, coming into our child pose. Coming back to the intention. Staying connected with your body, connected with the present moment. 
When you're ready, we'll slowly begin to shift forward. And then we'll begin to take things down. So we're going to slowly lower down onto our backs. And then let's draw the knees into the chest. Give ourselves a nice hug and squeeze. Moving into our bridge pose, we're going to let the heels rest onto the mat beneath the knees. Shoulders draw down and away. Now, if you have a restorative bridge in your practice, if you have blocks or a pillow at home, you can feel free to lift, placing that block on that short or medium hip height setting right beneath the back of the hips. And maybe we just rest here. For more active variation of your bridge, we root down into the heels to lift the hips. And then lengthening forward through the front of the knees, draw your heels energetically towards the shoulders. Maybe we walk the shoulders in beneath you. Maybe the hands can bind together. Lift the shoulder blades right up through the chest. Gentle tuck of the chin. If you have your hands bound beneath you, go ahead and release them. If you have a block beneath your hips, go ahead and release the hips. We'll bring the feet to the outside edges of the mat. Let the knees knock in. And then just gently let the lower legs sway side to side. Coming back through center, we'll cross that left foot over the right thigh, taking a reclined pigeon. And maybe we just stay here, gently pressing that left knee forward. Keep this foot flexed at the ankle, spread of the toes. Maybe we can thread the hands behind the right thigh, drawing your figure four shape in. And working to keep the right knee in line with the right shoulder. Keep active through your abdomen, so pressing the tailbone down towards the mat as we draw your shape in. Slowly release the hands from behind the thigh. Now option to keep this figure four shape, we're, I'm going to bring us into a twist. If this becomes uncomfortable, feel free to unfold your legs and just stack your knees. We're going to bring the arms open to a T. Take a deep breath in here and then as you exhale, let your figure four shape fall over to the right. So your left foot's going to come flat on the mat, keeping that left shoulder down. So we want not to roll here. And then you decide where to go from here. I like to gently press my knee away, lengthening through that left side body. Again, if this doesn't feel good, you can uncross the legs and just stack the knees here. We're finding that shape of a twist that feels good in your body. Reconnecting with your breath. Notice where else you may be holding tension. Begin to release. Let each exhale release that tension. Slowly unfolding the legs, shift back through center. And then taking that figure four by crossing the right foot over the left thigh. And you know, you may notice there's a big difference in flexibility from left to right. I know this side is so much more challenging for me even to take the figure four shape with my hip. 
making sure we're keeping the foot flexed, toes are spread, maybe threading the hands behind that left thigh, drawing your shape in. Next exhale, slowly release the hands if you've threaded behind the thigh. And then arms will come open to a T. And then taking that variation that you took of your twist on the other side, keeping your figure four shape or maybe just drawing the knees into the chest. Deep breath in and as you exhale, letting the legs fall over to the left so that right foot will come flat. Again, making any adjustments so this serves your body. Gazing over the opposite shoulder. Next exhale, slowly draw your shape back in through center. Drawing the knees into the chest one more time, giving yourselves a final hug and squeeze. And then I invite you at this time to take any final movements, any shapes to help you to make your practice feel complete. I might suggest coming into Sukta Baddha Konasana, so we begin in this pose, letting the soles of the feet come together, knees come out wide, maybe bringing that right hand back to the belly, left hand to the heart. See if this pose feels any different through your body than it did when we began. Maybe the hips hopefully feel a little more open. Reconnect with that giving and receiving nature of the breath. Letting go of effort. Feel yourself supported into the mat beneath you. Coming back to your center, coming back to your strength. Finding your final few breaths with whatever posture you're working with. And when you're ready, hands can come to the outside of the thighs if you're still in your reclined butterfly, drawing the knees and give ourselves one final squeeze before releasing the legs, letting the heels come to the outside corners of the mat. We'll let the arms fall along by our side, shoulders open, chest open. We'll take one final deep breath in here and exhale, sigh it out, releasing any control of the breath, moving into our final place of peace, our Shavasana. Breathing in and breathing out, letting go of any effort, Let of go, letting go of any control. 
finding this place of peace until the sound of my voice calls you back.
once again we'll begin to notice our breath. Bringing small movements back into our bodies. Maybe wiggling of fingers and toes, wrists and ankles. Maybe taking a full body stretch if that would feel nice. And when you're ready, we can slowly draw our knees into our chest. Giving yourself one final loving squeeze. Before gently rolling on to your right side. Letting the left hand rest in front of the heart. Pausing here, closing your practice in gratitude. Thanking yourselves for taking the time, especially at home, out of our schedule, out of our element, you're still taking the time for your practice. Gratitude for this practice and for one another. And as you prepare to move off of your mat, bring with you the resilience of this practice bring with you the strength to continue forward despite all of these obstacles we're facing. Whatever challenges arise, don't let fear rob you of your power of your, or your strength. When you're ready, you can press up to a comfortable seat, eyes still remaining softly closed, hands to heart center. And on an inhale, we lift the hands to the center of the brow, bringing the gaze upward. And exhale, we bow forward. The light in me honors the light in you. It has been my honor and my privilege to guide you through your practice. Namaste. Thank you so very much for allowing me to guide you through your practice. I wish you much health, much joy. Keep your strength, keep your resilience. We will get through this until we can practice in person again. Namaste.